Welcome back. The papers this week have been full of a certain young gentleman who, as they say, needs no introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, Cliff Richard. I thought that in, instead of doing the big sort of walk-on bit... No, I know, but it's, it's nice to be different, isn't it? Yeah, and it's late at night. Mind you know, whenever people say, you know, he needs no introduction, they just go ahead then and introduce me. <laughs> it would be f interesting, really, <laughs> if, uh, if in fact you didn't say anything. Probably no one would know. Has that ever happened? I never thought of no. that. You made me look a fool already. No, no I didn't mean <laughs> that. No, I, well, no, people aren't always sure because... Um, uh, I remember once walking through a street in Cornwall, mm. and uh, I mean, I'm used to being recognised, and I quite like it most of the time. But this time, I decided I wasn't going to own up. And uh, I walked down the street with some friends, and a lady came out of a shop, and she said, "You're Cliff Richard, aren't you?" So I nudged my friends and said, no, "No, no, no, I'm not." She said, "Oh, yes, you are." I said, "Oh, no, I'm not." She <laughs> said, "Yes, you are. I've seen you on the television." I said, "I'm not." She said, "You are." And in the end, I gave in and said, "Yes, I am." She said, "You're not, are you?" <laughs> <laughs> so people are really because of your deep. Uh, and, and obviously clear faith. Are you ever tempted to become any kind of martyr? It's, f it's funny you should mention the word, because I was talking with the press person earlier, and I was saying, he asked me about, uh, originally about eight years ago, I had planned to get out. I made all the steps that I could possibly take, which was cancel fan clubs, tell the press, um, take no level in RI, because I thought I'd be a teacher and teach RI. I passed the RI that one. But um, my mind changed when it became obvious that I could do very well for what I believe within my career, making use of the platform that's there. Mm. Without, I hope and believe, misusing the platform. Um, but what was your question? Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, are you tempted, tempted to ever to Oh, martyrdom. Martyr, yeah. Well, looking well, back on it and being as objective as possible, I must admit that martyrdom isn't a bad thing when it doesn't involve your life. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I mean, I wasn't going to have I to give up... I'm not sure how, it, how else you can become a martyr, but do... You? No, but no, I'd have been a martyr. I mean, in people's eyes, I mean, I'm, I'm, this is diluting the word, of course, but martyrdom, I, I, I know that people said, you really think of giving it up? Isn't that fan... You know, and there was that kind of atmosphere, which I think was quite desirable. I mean, I quite fancied people saying, gosh, he gave it all up for that. As, as a Christian, I firmly believe that God does guide. Now, if, that, if I carry that to its extreme, I've got to be prepared to do whatever he makes obvious. And to me, you see, when I made up all my plans, um, it was because I felt I couldn't do what I felt I should. And then suddenly I was able to do it, so I thought, right, I won't. How easy is it for a, a, a wealthy pop star to enter the kingdom of heaven? Extremely difficult, because um, I believe that everything that the Bible says is totally relevant and always true, so that when Jesus said it's much more difficult for the rich man to get into heaven than the camel is, through the eye of the needle. I think it's absolutely right. And if you just bring it down to today's thoughts, it is obvious because the, the things that money bring with it are greed. And the f funny thing is, of course, the attitude of God to money is vital. And the scripture isn't just that money is the root of all evil, but the love and the lusting after it. Now, I reckon I've conquered the love and the lusting after it. I, don't, I know I could do without it if I had to. But God's been good, you know, for, as far as I'm concerned, and as far as all of us are concerned in this country, anyhow. So uh, I don't feel any great problem. I just know that all the time there is this danger that well, one will want to earn more. One will want to consider one's material life more important than the spiritual. Circumstances, I mean, things like in the world you inhabit, like the pop world to a certain extent, isn't it embarrassing at times, like at parties or at, at jamborees and get-togethers, when mm. people say, oh my God, he's, he's going to start talking about Christ or Christianity? No, because I never make it a point to start talking about it. I mean, you see, it's one of the three greatest topics. I mean, I remember when I was, before I became a Christian, the topics were sex, politics and religion. Invariably in that order. <laughs> you know, but, but they're, they're the three big topics. So that when I go to a party, as it doesn't always happen, but I reckon 95% of the time, you'll find that halfway through the party, you're collared in the corner of the room, and someone will say, what, what is all this Christian bit, you know? What is it? And they'll start philosophizing and, and comparing notes and, and asking. And I don't mind talking about it. Listen, I, I like talking about it. It's my way of life now. But I try not to initiate it because I feel that people might feel it being preached at. And I remember when I was not a non-Christian, um, I hated the idea of being forced to go and listen to someone preach to me, so I try not to do that. Off, aren't you strange enough to, to Russia soon? Well, not as soon as people think. I think the press rather jumped the gun. I'm yeah. going to go there in August to make the tour. Ah, so But far. there is a little bit 
mm -hmm. uh, before that. They asked me to make a, an album, mm -hmm. which if we can make it swing, it'll happen in March. I've got so much coming up soon that there's really difficulty in getting the time off. So it's, um, it's quite a good offer. I mean, I feel very complimented because... Who, who made the offer to whom? Did you ring Moscow and say, can I come over? Uh, no. Uh, you know, we're very fortunate, and our policy doesn't need to stretch that. People tend to ring up and say, is Cliff available? Well, there's been carrots dangling for a long time. Professionally available, you mean? Professionally, oh, yes. None of that honky-tonk stuff here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, they came up with this thing. They wanted me to come and do a tour, and then someone over there, you see, had this idea of doing an album. Now, I feel knocked out because there are so many people they could ask. And really, when you think about it, so many people who are much more of today. I mean, I'm 35, very soon. So, um... <laughs> Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's all that little rumbling about? I don't know. I would, I, it always happens. This isn't an earthquake zone, so what? <laughs> we, what what's all that whoa bit? You mean you think he's not telling the truth? No, I am telling the truth. That we, he, no, I wonder why oh. they were murmuring a lot. I don't know, actually. The, the, I, that side is extremely jealous. <laughs> an extremely jealous side. They're the good-looking side, that's the jealous side. <laughs> I presume you're totally unknown in the Kremlin. In the Kremlin, maybe, but in Russia, no. They listen to all sorts of Western music via radio. Mm. And, uh, and so therefore they know, I, they know basically the whole scene that's happening here. They know all about us over here. I believe they have a sort of state agency. I mean, it's not the way we have it here at all. There aren't agents and Leslie Graves all over the place. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's strictly uh, the state. Uh, and so therefore, the state agency mm. has this thing about having myself and my group come over and do a couple of weeks of concerts, I think, in Leningrad in Moscow. What strings are attached? I don't mean... None at all, really. There's very little money in it, of course. And why are you doing it, then? Well, it's Russia, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, you mean it's either Russia or, or Nice? No, no. I mean, it's just that it is quite a challenge. I mean, uh, and, and it's also quite a place that one has all sorts of preconceived ideas about. You know, I've read James Bond, you know, and I want to find out for myself what they really like, and it would be really nice to go there as a performer. I had a friend of mine, he's a singer in France called Adamo, and he went there. And he says that, in point of fact, they make you feel bad because they're such terrific audiences. I mean, they said they kissed his hand, they th you know, and he knows he's not the best. And I know I'm not, so if they behave like that, one is going to tend to feel a little bit hypocritical, Absolutely. but I'm going to love it for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, as you lie in bed at night and you see a pair of eyes looking at you through a, a thing in the wall and, and, and your bedroom's bogged and all oh. that kind of thing. Well, I mean, I'm sure that goes on. I mean, if we can have water gates and things like that, mm. you know, in our side of the world, I'm sure there are things that go on. I'm sure a lot of it could be true. But um, happily, I'm not going there on a political bi you know, bias or dais. And so I shall just go there and enjoy making concerts. How's your Cyrillic alphabet? Pardon? <laughs> is that you mean Russian? Mm. I mean, well, they, it's don't write, you don't, you, they, they don't use the same letters, don't they? And they're all backwards way round. Oh, a bit like Greek. You, well, you must learn the difference between ladies and gents before you go. <laughs> what to look at, or do you mean the doors? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, I know you're a very simple lad, but you are 35. You know yes. one of the things. It's the doors. <laughs> I'm slightly ashamed, slightly embarrassed of writing your own songs. Well, it's not that I'm embarrassed. Well, I'm not embarrassed about that one, but quite often, you know, you write songs and then you hear someone else sing their own songs and you think, oh, dear, it's, uh, mine's nowhere near as good as that, so you sort of throw it aside. But every now and then, um, I do something that I think, well, you know, I'd like to give it a try, and then I do it, and then I quite like it, and I get a little bit of reaction. I've sung that to some people, and um, they said it was OK. It's a very pleasant song. You used to, tr used to try to get your mother to write the last lines of your songs, didn't you? Did I? Mm. <laughs> Are you listening, Mother? <laughs> now, you know your mother isn't a thousand miles from this, this building at this moment. No, she's not. She's in the building, actually. Be careful what we say. I know, yes. <laughs>